Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So a couple of days ago, Microsoft posted another article giving seven tips to get the most out of Windows 11. And I thought this was interesting because as you may well know, um, the end of support for Windows 10 is fast approaching where Microsoft says from the post that if you are still using Windows 10, you need to know that Microsoft will end support for Windows 10 on October 14, 2025, as we have been talking about on the channel. And once again, they say this means that Microsoft will no longer provide software updates from Windows Update, technical assistance or security fixes for Windows 10. Once again, ironically, they do, they do not mention the $30 for that extra one year of extended security update support, but nonetheless, and they say transitioning to Windows 11 is essential for maintaining your access to the latest security feature. So Microsoft really wanted you to move over to Windows 11. Now, I, I said the article was interesting because Microsoft is highlighting seven features that Windows 11 has, seven tips to get the most out of Windows 11. But to some extent or the other, Windows 10 has exactly the same features, if not more. So just to do a quick comparison, because I thought this was very interesting. So the first tip they give is on Windows 11, they say you can make the start menu your own where you can pin your favorite apps. Now they say rearrange tiles on Windows 11. On Windows 11, there are no live tiles. Or even resize the whole thing to suit your vibe. You cannot resize the start menu in Windows 11. So out of the three reasons they give for making the start menu your own on Windows 11, two of them are false. The only thing you really can do is pin your favorite apps in that statement regarding making the start menu your own. And pinning apps is, is available on Windows um, 10 start menu. You can rearrange tiles and you can also resize the start menu. So out of the three reasons for making the start menu your own, according to Microsoft on Windows 11, you can do all of those on Windows 10. And then the next is mastering snap layouts for multitasking. Now, as you may well know, with snap layouts, you can drag one window to the left side of your screen and the other to the right, allowing both to fit without overlapping, which is a nice multitasking feature. And on Windows 10, once again, if we head into our settings, multitasking, we also get snap windows, we work with multiple windows. So the same feature is available on Windows 10. Then the tip three, the next reason they say is you can create a desktop for every project. So basically this is using the Windows logo key and tab. So if we just do that quickly, and basically you get to your task view. And this is where you can create different desktops. So you've got desktop one, desktop two, you can create a new desktop and so on. So that's also a feature that's available on Windows 10. Then we move on to tip number four. Now this one I would say is the feature that is, is not exactly the same as we get it in Windows 11. But they say tip four, stay up to date with widgets. Now there is no widget support uh, in Windows 10. And there is widget support for news, weather, updates, calendar reminders um, on the widgets board on Windows 11, but in Windows 10, we get the news and interest feed. And here to the right hand side, you are able to pin weather. And if you click on your profile, although there are no widgets, you have an option for information cards, which aren't actually widgets. But as mentioned, this is the feature that isn't exactly as it is in Windows 11, but still gives you at least some basic functionality in regards to that. So you can show weather card, finance card, show sports card, traffic card, and show recommended by Microsoft card. So to some degree or other, that is available on Windows 10. Then tip number five is they say you can stay on track with focus sessions in Windows 11, where you can set a timer, work for a focus period, and then take a break. And this is exactly the same on Windows 10, because the clock app on Windows 10, which you can download from the Microsoft Store, also has focus sessions. 
to set a timer and then you can obviously take a break. So that's also available on Windows 10. Then we move to tip number six, where you can log in with Windows Hello. And as you may well know, Windows Hello lets you sign in using facial recognition or a fingerprint scanner, which makes it faster and more secure according to Microsoft. So if we head back into settings and we head into our accounts on Windows 10, sign in options. If your hardware supports it, you can also use Windows Hello, face, fingerprint, pin, and even a security key exactly the same as it is on Windows 11. And the final tip they give um, regarding Windows 11 and reasons why you need to move on to Windows 11 is you can enable dark mode for comfort. Now we all know on Windows 10 that we have exactly the same option on Windows 10. I'm currently running dark mode as I speak. So if we head to personalization, colors, yeah, we've got choose your color, dark, light, or custom. So dark mode is also available um, on Windows 10. So as mentioned at the beginning, I thought this was interesting, where Microsoft at the start of the article says, if you're still on Windows 10, now's a good time to make the switch, especially with support for Windows 10 ending in October this year. So although Microsoft obviously is kind of reminding you about features that are available in Windows 11, Windows 10, to some extent or the other, has exactly the same features. So I thought that was interesting. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.